What does it take to be the top earner in your state or the country or just locally? What does it make? What do you, what do you have to make income wise to be considered at the 1% in your state? I'm going to go over that today. And then I want to talk about whether or not being at the top 1% of your state means that your retirement is going to be even better. So today we're going to be talking about what does it mean to be in the top 1% of your state? There's my co-host Tony Shore. And does that mean you can retire sooner if you're at the top? What do you think, Tony? First of all, before we start, I'm going to ask you, what do you think the top retirement, which state has the highest earners? I'll give you the range here and then and I'll put the link below for listeners and viewers. This is a smart asset study from, uh, study from 2023. America's top 1% is different from each state. The range is 370,000 a year to 950,000 a year. Is so, this Tony, people in state? retirement? Is this people no. in retirement or everyone? This is top earner. So which top which earner state, state has the top earners? Um boy, I don't that's a tough one. I would say New York, Texas or California. I'm going to bring it up here. <clears throat> I'm going to bring it up here. You're wrong again, Tony. Mm. For all to see, number one, Connecticut. Well, New York is second. That's that was New close. York is second. I didn't hear Connecticut come from your mouth there. I didn't hear it. No, Connecticut. No, I've, I've never been. I don't know those people. <laughs> New Jersey. So Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts. So we're talking New York, and then. That tri-state area we called it growing up. I grew yep. up there, New York, yep. New Jersey, Connecticut. Tri-state area, top earners. That's where all the money's at. Yes, look at that, nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. It drops oh. off pretty quickly to New York, seven seventy. What is that? Seven. I'm struggling to read that. Seven hundred and seventy-six thousand. Uh, seven. Yes. So right now I have it sorted by tax rate. Let me fix that. I want to sort it by income. So Connecticut is number one, Massachusetts is number two, ah. and then California is number three. So you you had number three. New York is number six. That's I was crazy. sorting by the top tax rate, but oh. now we're looking at the, the top income. Still, so Connecticut, number one. Look at Florida, number eight. Where you live, Tony, Minnesota, number 16. So to be... At Not bad for a Midwest state. I think we're the only mid. There's no other Midwest states above us. Well, Illinois, if you count that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, I'm surprised New Hampshire is that 000. low. I, I figured New Hampshire would be up with those East Coast states, but I can't believe we. Uh, I mean, it's quite a drop off. Nine hundred and fifty-two thousand in Connecticut to number ten. New Hampshire is 659. That's, yeah. you know, 300,000. That's a third less. Yeah. That's significant. If we scroll all the way, and I don't have it on here, but I looked it up, who do you think number 50 is? Uh, number 50 would be uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, or Alabama. West, oh, West Virginia. Virginia. West Virginia, yeah. yeah. West that's... Virginia, 367. So if you make 367,000 in West Virginia, you're in the top 1%. Now, nationally, the number here is $652,000. So if you make $652,000, you're in the top 1% in the country. That's annual That's annual, annual household income, income yeah. Mm -hmm. The median is $75,000. So, you know, that's eight times more national. Wow. So, and I, I already spoiled it, but the top 1% pays the most taxes as well. Um, if I sort by the tax rate, we're looking at um, Connecticut, number one, the top 1% pays 28.4% effective tax rate. So Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, or or Taxachusetts, as we called it. You my said the top 1% pays the most and least? They no, I just most? sorted by the, the, the most. The least is Arkansas, 21%. The top 1% would pay a 21% effective tax rate. Sure. So, But yeah. they don't actually so, pay that. The top 1%, you show that tax rate, but 
they don't necessarily actually pay that. That's what they're supposed to pay if they don't have deductions, write-offs. Well, trickery. we're talking about on earnings, on earnings, yeah. earned income. If oh, you okay. have earned capital income. gains tax, yeah, that's a different story. Sure. Right? State tax, yeah. different types of taxes, but in yeah. terms of earnings, income tax, uh, 28% in Connecticut. Yeah. And um, that's the top. So... I wanted to point this out because mm -hmm. the question is, you know, okay, so now we know 650,000. We just did a show not too recently ago. I mean, recently ago, not too long ago. 1.2 million is what you need. I'll put it up here. Oh, yeah. 1.2 million, according to what people think they need. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. yeah. So, because I run into people all the time and say, wow, 650,000. If I made 650,000 this year, in one year, I'd retire next year. I, I'd be able to save it all. I'd spend twenty thousand. I'd save six hundred fifty, and I'd retire. Right? Just doesn't work that way. Nope, never it works that work. way. Yeah. If only. So does so? The question is, Tony, does earning more mean that retirement's going to be sooner, better, or less stressful? That's that's the question I want to just ponder. No, knowing these numbers. The answer is no. Definitively. Yeah. We're done. All right. That was a short show. <laughs> why do you think, why do you say that? What makes you say that if, if earning, you know, if you're in the top 1% as an earner, shouldn't you be in the first to retire and shouldn't your retirement be the dream retirement? Nope. Because the people who earn more money typically work harder and longer i not work harder necessarily but uh they're really committed to their job and they're committed to that lifestyle and in order to maintain it they need to keep working and i think it's harder for those people to just step out of that uh people don't uh, it's like in the it's why people lose so much at the casinos why when somebody's up two thousand dollars do they go home down five that's the same way. They don't leave. You're not going to step away from the table when you're winning. That's why people aren't going to retire when they're making that much money. I you you threw a lot out there. You 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 threw a lot of spaghetti against the wall. A lot of it <laughs> stuck, Tony. And one that stuck with me that you said is the lifestyle. Once you're at that lifestyle, yeah, it's tough to come down from there. It is. If you're making seven hundred thousand a year, your lifestyle may creep up, and for most it does. Here's a stat from a PwC. I think that's Price Waterhouse Cooper, or it yep. used to be called that. Um, employee wellness survey in 2023. Here's the quote, Tony. Quote: Among those who earn one hundred thousand or more per year, fifteen percent always or often run out of money between paychecks. Sure. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you make, you can live paycheck to paycheck. Even if you're making $900,000 a year, you could live paycheck to paycheck if you right. aren't careful. It might be a it might be a more extravagant lifestyle. But you could that private still jet that private jet costs a lot to fuel and the pilot costs money. Right. The personal chef, the nanny. You know, when I lived in New York and I did the commute from New Jersey to New York City, Mm -hmm. and my wife worked and then when we had kids we did the math i was like geez it's cheaper for you to not work because three kids daycare you're yep. approaching 60 70 thousand dollars a year we, we had the same calculation the kids. Same. so yeah i mean so you can live paycheck to pay but the question is are you saving more are, so if you're making seven hundred thousand, you're living paycheck to paycheck that's fine as long as you're saving a big chunk of your money for future but what does your future look like will you step down and live off less income not that easy not that easy so i'm going to throw a hypothetical question to you tony okay. and to the listeners i want you to think about this which will have a better retirement. And I put better in quotes because, you know, that's it's subjective. But I, I measure successful retirement as increasing income and decreasing stress. So 
which one will have a less stressful or a better retirement? The Connecticut resident working in New York City earning $300,000 per year, or say a city worker in your town, we'll call it Clearwater, Florida for me, making $60,000 a year. So the person in Connecticut earning Three hundred thousand, or the city worker local earning sixty thousand, five times less. What do it you depends. think? Good answer. I like it. I like it. You're you're cramping yeah. my style out. You can't <laughs> steal my answers. <laughs> but in your like, what, depends on what. Uh, it depends on uh, cost of living affects it. Uh, the cost of living in Connecticut and and working in New York City is exponentially more, uh, and could be it could make that difference between the cost of living could be that much more between sixty k and three hundred k, and it also depends on how much if you're talking about which one will have a better retirement, uh, how much they save. If the three hundred k guy per year isn't saving anything for retirement. But the 60K per year guy is putting away half that every year for retirement. The 60K guy is going to retire much better than the 300K. So they could both be living paycheck to paycheck. Right. They could be. Yeah. But you're saying if one of them is saving more for retirement than the other, they might have a less stressful retirement. I would also add to that. What is the income needed in retirement for each of these? probably different different the right the 300k income person may have a higher expectation of living yeah and spending right than the and and notice i put here tony in this scenario city worker what does that mean why is pension. that important <laughs> pension yes yes so i caught that you know my kids are getting ready for college my oldest is going to be look is looking and I'm thinking to myself, what degree, so on and so forth. And I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with being a government worker, city, local, federal, and getting that pension? Yeah, you're going to get less, right? You're going to get less income compared to, a, a, you know, the private sector. We all know that. That's, that's played out, right? But what about that pension? How much is that worth? And, benef and health water, benefits are usually way, benefits. way better right now yeah. think about the clearwater worker let's say they work their 30 years for the city and then they get a pension worth i don't know fifty thousand a year for life how much is that worth how much is that worth i mean say you retire at 65 and you live 20 years fifty thousand a year times 20 years how much is that just in pure dollar amount, a million dollars, right? Not to mention they usually have a cost of living increase built in. Not to mention the fact that it's guaranteed by a, the government. No thinking involved. Yeah, it's just give me right. Whereas, how much? So, so I need one point two million to retire. What about that pension? Not to mention Social Security. So this person might be able to generate enough income from Social Security and their pension to meet their income need. Talk about stress-free. Whereas the person making a ton of money in the top 1% in Connecticut making 900000 a year, they have $900,000 worth of problems probably. Not all of them. I, obviously, you know, the if you or I would be like, I'd take the 900000 over the sixty, right? Because it just makes sense. But you got to factor in some things in here that people don't talk about. It's just, oh, that person makes more than me, so they must be better. They're, they're going to have a better chance at retirement. No, that's not the major factor. Your income is not the major factor in your retirement. What the major factor is, is your spending. Because find me a million dollars a year income, I could spend a million and two. Find me $5 million a year in income, I could find someone that will spend $5.5 .5 going in debt with 5 million of income. Yes, it happens. I could find someone making 30,000 that spends 60. But I also can find someone making 50,000 that spends 40 and saves the rest. Right. So my conclusion Tony is a top earner, they may have an edge when it comes to retirement because they got more income now. If they do something with it, 
if they actually do something with that that money for retirement, they build their own pension or they save. However, the high earners feel a lot more pressure to make more. We've done show on this. How much is enough? Never enough. There's never enough. I can always right. make more. I can always make more. I just made the most I've ever made in my life. Oh, but next year is going to be better. I'm going to make even more. Why? So the key to retirement success is not how much money you make. It's the income to spending ratio. Are you spending more than you make? And we did an entire show on this. And I said the number one key to a successful retirement is living within your means. Nothing else. Yep. Nothing else. Yep. That's why I knew the answer. Because I know. past shows, and, and you've drilled it into I me. Cut you off. I cut you off because I didn't want you to steal the thunder. <laughs> you know the answer. You're going to start doing the show without me. I think you are. There's rumors out there. Yeah. You know, and to There the may be a few episodes up, floating around where you're just muted and I talk. I won't know until the end. I had a listener comment on YouTube saying, who is this guy, Tony? I looked him up. I can't find him. You're mysterious. People are starting to You're ask, right. what's this guy all about? I'm all what? over the internet. They just have to add the doctor in front. If they search Dr. Yeah. Tony Shore, they'll find me. It's Tony Shore, as in the shoreline, not sure. Yes. Tony, Tony Shore, because he's not sure about anything anymore. Oh, yeah, they got the spelling wrong. That's why, yeah. S-H-O-R-E, just like by the sea. There you go. Oh, there it is. All right. Yeah. On that note, Tony, enjoy your week. I will see everyone next week. Thanks for a good show. All matters Thanks. discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not an investment advice. Dan Whittle nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance, Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc. and Dolphin Insurance, Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.